you know, look, when my agent called me, I said, yeah, of course I'll come back. You know, it was so, oh, much, mate, it was so financially lucrative. You're imperative to the show now. Oh, oh we're on. Oh, wait, we're on. <laughs> G'day, guys. Welcome back. We had so much fun last time, we've decided to invite our good friend Hiff back to lend a paw. Yeah, g'day, guys. I think I like this whole TV thing, you know. I've never had so many people recognise me down at the park. Oh, well, when it comes to dogs, Hiff, we figured you had more experience. Plus, in dog years, aren't you, like, double our age? Yeah, but he's still young at heart. Oh, thanks, team. Well, let's get this show underway! <laughs> There's many reasons why someone might choose to study to be a dog trainer. You might want a change of career. Or you may already work with animals and just wish to expand on your skills. Or you might just want to be able to better understand your pup and how to train them better. Hi, Cherie. Hello. So what made you want to choose to study the National Dog Trainers Federation Certificate? It all started after a major accident where I broke my neck. Echo is my assistant's dog, so she's allowed to go anywhere a guide dog is allowed to go. Lucky you, Echo. She helps me with picking up objects and helping me uh, manage my pain. Mm -hmm. After her helping me so much, I, I really wanted to be able to help other people with their dogs. Not just assistance dog training, but also general obedience training and behaviour training. I decided to do NDTF as they're the only ones in Australia that's nationally recognised to be a, a dog specific course. So with all these new skills and knowledge that you've acquired, how, how's it helped you? I have now started my own dog training business. Uh -huh. I go to other people's houses and help them with their dogs. Mm -hmm. And I also work in retail, so it helps me with customers with their doggy problems as well. So, with these dogs that you've been training, what's the most common behavioural problems you've been coming across? Barking is definitely a common problem, as well as pulling on the lead. And when introducing a new family member, whether it's a baby or another dog or a cat, having that extra knowledge of having a dog trainer to help the process of your dog coping with the change of family. So a little birdie told me that these skills are also good for training other pets as well. Definitely. NDTF offer a wide range of training skills which is related to dogs but it can also be used with other animals. I have trained not only dogs but also cats, birds, rats. Um, rats? Yes. What can you train a rat to do? Obstacle courses, you can train them to do many tricks like you do with a dog. So yeah. standing up on their back legs, walking on a lead, following you, coming when they're called. So they're just like dogs? Exactly. <laughs> well, that's amazing. Well, thank you so much, Jerry, and I wish you all the luck with your, your future endeavours. If you'd like to learn more about becoming a dog trainer, then head to the NDTF website or check out Pooches at Play. Getting away on an off-road adventure or camping trip is a great way to leave behind the hustle and bustle of city life. When you can take your dog with you though, it's even better because they get to spend some time in the great outdoors too. So if this sounds like the perfect getaway for you, I've got some top tips to help make your travel safe and comfortable. It's important of course to start with the transport and making sure you have the right vehicle that can cope with the off-road conditions like sand, mud and maybe even snow. A four-wheel drive like this Land Rover Discovery is the perfect choice, especially if a mud puddle or sandy beach is your dog's happy place. Then you'll want a car that's got cleanliness, comfort and safety covered. Nationally, it's illegal to drive with the dog on your lap and they must be away from the driver so they can't distract you. In some states, they must also be harnessed in. If you have a pet barrier in your boot or you harness them in the boot area, then I would suggest an awesome rubber mat like this one to help keep it clean from muddy paws and drooling mouths. The awesome thing about this one as well, it's got a rear height adjuster, so dogs with little legs like Darcy can jump in much easier. In fact, Darcy, this is like a palace for you. I reckon we could both fit in here. If your dog's right in the back seat, then you definitely want to have a good seat cover to help keep them hair free and water free. This snoozer road tripper is a great one. And remember as well, airbags can actually be lethal to dogs, so sitting in the front seat is dangerous. So either being harnessed into the back or kept in the boot area is the way to go. But I don't mean the boot of a sedan, okay? Dogs can also get motion sickness like us humans, so before you go on a long road trip, take them for a walk and just a little bit of food. If they don't like car travel at all, I'd suggest short, fun, frequent trips to the park so they have a good association with it before you go away. Their favourite toy, or even a long-lasting chew stick, 
though Darcy, we haven't even gone now holiday yet, <laughs> can help. And for small dogs like Darcy, you might even want to try a booster seat so they're up high and can look out at the horizon, wind down the window so they've got plenty of fresh air, lots of frequent stops along the way and lots of water. The other thing to remember, which I have seen before, is we should not fasten our dogs by the collar into the car or to the door handles because this can be extremely dangerous, especially if you break quickly. When planning your trip, make sure you check the area beforehand to see if there's any rules or regulations about having your pets with you. If you're staying in a caravan park or camping ground, also check if they've got any restrictions and conditions as well. Now the good thing is, there are so many pet friendly places to go and stay these days, there are plenty of options around. And if you're looking for the perfect car for your getaway, then check out the ULR Land Rover website. You ready to plan a trip, Das? Yeah. I thought I told you about the risks of chewing on sticks. Oh, sorry, Dr Mel, I just can't help it. Sticks are just so much fun to chase and chew on. Oh, I know, but sometimes you just can't do everything that you want to do. You would be surprised at the number of stick injuries that I've seen at the clinic. I mean, just last week, there was a dog that came in with a splinter that big embedded in its throat. Oh, ouch! You know, you're right. That reminds me of when I was a puppy and I tried to catch a stick mid-air. I ended up with a nasty cut in my mouth and that hurt a lot. I had to go to the vet and have surgery to fix it. Not my finest moment. Exactly. That's why chewing on sticks or using them to play fetch is so dangerous. Mm. You know, the worst case I've ever seen was a dog that had a stick this thick that it impaled it through the abdomen. It went in here and came out near its groin. Oh. I know. But miraculously, the stick missed all its vital organs and after surgical removal, the dog walked away okay. Oh, geez, that sounds rough. What should the folks at home do if their dog's been playing with a stick and something goes wrong? Well, stick injuries happen really quickly and they can be very obvious or they can be subtle. One of the more subtle but common injuries mm. is where a small part of a stick gets stuck, just let's show everyone, across the roof of the mouth oh, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Really distressing for the dog and the owner, but relatively hidden. Other injuries that can occur are where fragments of stick become embedded in the soft tissue of the mouth. Mm. I saw you gnawing on a stick mm, before. Yeah, well. So yeah. better be careful. Sorry about that. And again, I know you're getting in trouble a lot here, but like what you did, Dogs commonly will be chasing sticks and try and catch them mid-air. Mm. They can get a lot of injuries with that too. It was a good catch though. Piff, stop promoting it. Sorry, Dr Mel. It's okay. As I was saying, if dogs try and chase sticks when they're playing fetch, if the stick injures their mouth, that's bad enough. But if the stick acts as a javelin and then the dog lands on the stick, it can impale the dog. And you can imagine how much injury and risk that that's imposing. Oh no. So you really do need to get them to a vet immediately. That's exactly right. I mean, even if it's left for a couple of days, the entry wound can heal up, but the fragment can migrate, can migrate through the body. It's okay, yours, they got all of yours. Oh jeez, playing with sticks can be costly then to pooch and owner, right? Exactly. Even if it's a small injury, you still require treatment most of the time. Not to mention if you need further investigation, x-rays, endoscopy. That's why it's so important to get to the vet as soon as it happens. Oh, and make sure you have HIF pet insurance for accidents like this too. That's right. Pet insurance can help enormously when it comes to covering you for accidents and injuries like the ones that we've been talking about. And HIF has some great pet insurance options for cats and dogs of all ages with zero access too. Gee, I hope no one ever throws a stick to me again. What can they throw instead, Dr Mel? Good question. Well, you can use balls, mm. yeah, mm. or a safe stick like this one. Have a look. What do you think of this one? That looks great. That's it for me. No more sticks. <clears throat> <gasps> stick! No, oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. Remember what I told you about sticks. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry, Dr Mel, I forgot already. <sighs> oh. If you'd like to check out all the antics with Pooches at Play, then check out our social media.
We're on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. Or if you'd like to learn more about how to look after your pooch, keep it healthy and happy, then check out our website for special articles. We've got training, grooming, some pet friendly travel. Toys and accessories that your dog will love and more. And you can even sign up to our e-newsletter to get special member only offers. Jump on poochesatplay.com. I've been asked to pick up some kitty litter for a friend, but I've got no idea where to start. There's so many different types. There's, there's clumping, there's non-clumping, there's silica, there's wood, paper. I just, oh. Hey, can I help you? Hey, Jess, how are you going? Good, thanks. How are you? I'm OK. Uh, a friend wants me to get some kitty litter for their um, cat, but I don't know where to start. Do you know what the cat prefers? Uh, no, I haven't spoken to it personally. Oh, so cats have their own personal preference when it comes to kitty litter. It's important you get what the cat's most comfortable with. Um, some cats have sensitive paws, other cats may have particular habits that they picked up during kittenhood. OK, so tell me about clumping. What does that do? This ever-clean clumping one absorbs the urine into a hard, solid lump. So when it comes to cleaning time, you just scoop out the urine and the faeces and it leaves the rest of the litter clean and dry. So you just scoop it out and put it in the bin? Yep. OK, and um, what's this other one? Silica, is it? This is non-clumping and it's based on silica crystals. When the cat urinates, it will just sift through. So when it comes to cleaning time, you'll have to remove the whole litter at least once a week. OK. So do cats try and eat the kitty litter? Some pet owners can find that if they've got longer hair and the clumping litter gets stuck to it, they can ingest while grooming, or it can get stuck in their paws. And again, while they're cleaning, they can ingest a little bit. Um, even the dusty ones, they can inhale it when they're scratching around in the litter box. Is it bad for them? Um, generally speaking, cat litter is non-toxic to cats, but if they do ingest a considerable amount, I would suggest to see a vet. OK, um, what about the smell? So some kitty litters can tend to smell. It's important that you get one that odour absorbs rather than masking the odour with like a floral scent or something. Cats have a really sensitive sense of smell, so they will notice if the kitty litter's dirty before you will. And if you're trying to mask it, they might reject it altogether. Now, what if I've got more than one cat? Do I need more than one tray? Ideally, yes. If you've got a multi-cat household, you will have one tray per cat and an extra one. Great. Well, I think I'm going to need to speak to the cat's owner and get some more info, or maybe the cat itself. Yep. But I'll let you get back to what you were doing. Well, we're all here to help. <laughs> Thanks, Jess. Looks like someone needs a bit more help, that's for sure. For discerning pet owners, it has become increasingly difficult to know what establishments openly welcome our furry companions. If you're planning a holiday and want to take your pet along for the ride, then head to takeyourpet.com.au. Take Your Pet provides animal owners with a simple, easy to navigate solution to searching, finding and choosing the next adventure with their four-legged friends. With over 12,000 pet friendly businesses on their database, you're spoilt for choice and will easily be able to find the best pet friendly establishments for your needs. From accommodation listings and restaurants to things to do and see, Take Your Pet is a leading online destination for all things pet friendly travel in Australia. Henty Bay Beachfront Holiday Park offers a spacious beachfront location just five minutes along the coast from Portland, the western gateway of the Great Ocean Road. Set on 10 acres of beach frontage, accommodation options range from luxury self-contained villas and classic cabins to powered and unpowered campsites. There's ample parking for caravans and boats, plus refurbished dorm-style accommodation that's perfect for groups. While visiting Portland, there's loads of natural wonders to enjoy including whale watching, a petrified forest, amazing fishing and diving, plus spectacular hikes. For more pet-friendly accommodation ideas, visit the Take Your Pet website. We often forget that our cats, just like our dogs, need plenty of mental and physical stimulation whilst they're left alone all day. So a great tip to keep them busy and active is to give them interactive toys filled with treats so that they can keep their brains working and also keep their bodies working. In fact, cats can get a version of Alzheimer's just like us humans do, so it's really important that we do make sure we keep their brains going. Another tip to keep them mentally stimulated as well is you could put a bird feeder outside the window if they're an inside cat, gives them something to look at and also keeps them interested of course too. And remember, 
overweight cats can tend to avoid exercise. So to keep them moving and for problem solving, put their saucers up on their cat tree or even put them on top of the stairs so they have to climb up to get their food. If you'd like more information, visit poochesatplay.com. Feeding your pet a raw food diet can benefit your dog or cat in many ways, including having a positive impact on their behaviour. Isn't that right, Trish? Yes, absolutely. Nutrition can play a big role in the dog's behaviour. Mm, and we're certainly doing an assessment something we look at as well, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so when we look at, uh, when we're presented with dogs with behavioural uh, issues, we certainly look at diet as, as uh, one of the uh, contributing factors of the issues as well. Yeah, I mean, it's like us humans. I know if, you know, you're not getting the right nutrients, you're not feeling top of the game, you can, well, I get a bit crabby at times, so I'm sure our pets are the same. Absolutely, yeah. And what led you to, to big dog, really? Yeah, so one of our previous dogs, Tasha, was diagnosed with a mast cell tumour. Um, and after her tail was amputated, we found out it came back as a level two uh, tumour, which the likelihood of spread was going to be high. So I wanted to make sure that I was giving her body the best chance um, of fighting. So we uh, switched her over to a raw food diet. Okay, and you did the same with Gabe then as well, who's 12 and a half. Absolutely. Doing yes. pretty well. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so what are some of the, the benefits I guess you've seen in Gabe? Uh, well, he's obviously great for his age, for 12 and a half. He's still very sprightly, still quite active. Um, he's got a great coat, um, you know, he's, he's in good health. So absolutely, I've seen a big difference, even just in his demeanour as well. Um, yes. And it's helped with his arthritis. And You were saying he's a bit more switched on too yeah, as well. Yeah, absolutely. For a 12 and a half, he's certainly very switched on still. So. Yeah, nice. And so do you actually recommend big dog and raw food diets to your clients? Oh, for sure. I think what you put in is what you're going to get out. Yes. So if you put some good food in, uh, you're going to get, you know, obviously a better healthy dog and better performance dog too. If you... That's right. It's the same with training, isn't it? What you put in, you get out. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Have you got any other behaviour tips relating to diet that you can give to the viewers at home? Yeah, definitely. I recommend feeding a species-specific diet, um, just centering around good meats, um, some leafy greens and certainly some raw bones as well. Yeah, thank you. Well, if you'd like to find out where you can buy big dog pet foods, visit their website. Hey! Thanks. Very nice car seat cover you've got here, Lara. I know, and it's a lifesaver for my new leather seats. Oh, I can imagine all the hair that Darcy loses. will be saving a fortune on car cleaning bills. I know, and the great thing about the Snoozer Road Tripper is that it's hammock style, so I can secure it to the front and to the back so that he can't dart into the front seats and scratch them while I'm ready to harness him up. You've been foiled, Darcy. <laughs> but how do you get to the seat belts? Easy, just through here, so it's easy to harness in them as well. Oh, yeah. What's this zip for? Ah, uh, you like this one. So, because it's a full zip, I can just leave it on Darcy's side if someone else is sitting in the back seat. Well, that's a bit more civilised. <laughs> you remember that time when Darcy and I had to sit in the back and ended up with hair all over my bum? Oh, it's a glamorous TV world we work in. Yes. What's this made of? It's really nice. Well, it's a nice, I know, this is a nice cosy fleece on one side. Isn't it, Darcy? Nice and warm. But on this, this is water resistant, so great for raining weather and also down at the beach. You can just chuck it in the wash. Seems a lot easier than the one I've got at home. Yeah, it is. It literally just goes in the washing machine. And the good thing, the fact it's a snoozer product, it's got a lifetime guarantee and a free repair service. Where do I get one from? <laughs> well, it's only $139.90 on their website, snoozer.com.au. Oh, and it comes in this as well to cut down on packaging, a calico bag, so I can put all of Darcy's doggy gear in here. That is pawsome. <laughs> you get it? Pawsome. We got it the first time. Darcy liked it, didn't you, mate? Yeah. No, he likes all your jokes. You've got four paws. <laughs> Come on, let's get you buckled in. This week's smart pet is Hugo the Cavoodle. Life really is a balancing act for this cute little guy. I don't know what's more impressive, his ability to resist the urge to eat the tasty treats, or Hugo's uncanny talent for balancing them on the tip of his nose. Sometimes, he manages to keep a cool, or should I say, level head, despite having his favourite snacks stacked on top of the other right before his eyes. No matter how you look at it, he's one smart little guy and deserves a treat or two after that. Think your pet has the smarts to win our Smart Pets competition? Then make sure you get your entry in. One lucky viewer will receive a awesome prize pack valued at over two and a half grand, including a $500 pet stock gift voucher, a year's supply of pet food, 
a $500 HIF wellbeing and massage voucher for you, and $500 worth of Family Parks gift vouchers. There's also three $100 pet stock vouchers for runner-ups. To enter, just send us a video of your pet doing their amazing trick. The more unique and talented, the better. So be as smart as your pet and enter to win. Visit poochesatplay.com for more details. I just want to make sure that they get my good side. Because, mate, um, you are so handsome, it doesn't matter where they point the camera. Oh, thanks, mate. You're not too shabby yourself. Uh, Neither are you, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. It has been a lot of fun. It's, it's been really enjoyable. I reckon we should get the gang back together sometime. It's been awesome, <laughs> And I learned quite a lot as well. Yeah, well, that's what the show's all about. It's fun, but full of facts. Mm. So make sure you check in next week. I will. I'll be on the couch, glued to the screen. Hey, you guys at home should make sure you're doing the same thing. And don't forget, in between, Check it out our website. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. <laughs> oh, yep, yep, yep. Ah. That's the spot. <laughs>